everyone, welcome back to Alkaline Hydroxide 784 and the usual GPO backgrounds. Yeah, so today we will venture into the grand topic of arts. Well, unlike some other big topics, I wasn't exactly sure what consisted of subtopics for this because, you know, like the way I learned the so called about the topic in GP was kind of fixed in my head so <laughs> I'll just look at it that way I'll look at questions per se instead so today I'm going to look at something that you would have definitely heard of in GP class double confirm shop everything <laughs> and that is the question what is art okay maybe not the exact phrasing but you get the idea <laughs> and you definitely would have studied for this topic in case it came out um yeah like in terms of the art topic so, you know, I should do y'all some justice and not just cover obscure topics that I actually like to do. I mean, I like to do some weird things like social linguistics and stuff like that. I should do some more common stuff as well. Yeah, okay, cool. Anyways, um, there are different ways to define something. So, like, the, the point of this episode will be trying to figure out how to define art. So, the very first way to define it like, the easiest way to do it would just be looking at, at a dictionary. So, of course, where else should we go but the Cambridge Cambridge Dictionary? Well, we are being... I mean, not me, but, you know, A-Levels is being marked by Cambridge, right? So, might as well go to their dictionary. Right, so, if we look at the Cambridge Dictionary, there's a whole bunch of definitions there. So, the first one is um, art and, as a noun, which, like, the making of objects and stuff that are beautiful or that express feelings or if it's or it's just generally the activity that where you paint or draw or make a sculpture or the product of that activity per se or an activity through which people express ideas well yeah okay cool and there's also something specifically saying the arts it's not just art but the arts which is you know the making or showing of performance basically of painting acting dancing whatever yeah so they're all considered together as the arts so what else does the dictionary say mm, the other other definition for arts is humanities basically the humanity subjects why did the phone make a noise okay so, and another def definition is a skill or special ability so yeah, there's even there's even the meaning of what we saw in the past, like the six the Shakespearean kind of you know, you are that kind of thing. Yeah, that even that is a that is there. I don't know why. Uh if we keep going now we look at the so called US definitions, one of which is the making or doing of something whose purpose is to bring pleasure to people through the enjoyment of what is beautiful and interesting or things often made for this purpose such as painting, drawings or sculptures. Why is it so long? Okay. And the other definition is skill or ability. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of definitions and it's a big mess. So if I were to summarize it, um, you know, it would be, it, it could be something that's beautiful or expresses feelings. It will be like the painting, drawing, sculpture, that kind of stuff, or an activity that expresses ideas, or you know, actually it's all just the same thing I just mentioned here. You can just read it yourself. Yeah, so here's the summary of the stuff that we got from the dictionary. And um, yeah, after looking at all of these definitions and all, we kind of get a good foundation to start from, a good starting point. And we have to go to the next step, which is to make some criteria out of these you know, the dictionary definitions. Well, because the dictionary is, well, just a book. I mean, nowadays it's a web page, but you get the point, with some generalized de definitions written. But even from there, we can kind of tell that the meaning of art has some basis in context. Even within the realm of the dictionary, we, we see that there's some lot that context behind the meaning. And yes, the, the definition of art, or literally anything, would vary based on one's own opinion and criteria and all that kind of stuff. So to make things clear, we have to create some criteria. And what we'll do is we'll just, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be like a little heuristic per se. Uh, and after we make this little heuristic, we have to test this with real life examples, or at least, you know, 
do something like that and refine them or if you want to add and remove certain criteria as we proceed along. Yeah, so that's what you're going to do today. So for now, here are the criteria that I have come up with based on the dictionary. So before we move on, I would like to note that there is both the two different kinds of arts that I've seen here, which is the first one is what you would actually think of when you say arts, basically, like, you know, painting, dancing, drawing, uh, sorry, not, yeah, drawing and painting are pretty similar, uh, drama, music, that kind of stuff. So that would be like, you know, the arts per se. And the other kind of art is humanities. I may not really be touching a lot on humanities for this episode. I'll be focusing more on the arts per se. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the criteria that I've come up with are these four criteria. So the first one is something that is beautiful or something that expresses feelings slash ideas. And the second one is that it requires some skill. The third one is that it invokes a pleasure or some kind of feelings in the viewer. The fourth one is that it's human in nature. Of course, this doesn't really come from the dictionary per se, but I feel like this is an important aspect to take note of as well. So it's created by humans and appreciated by humans. We need to actually look at whether that's the case as well. So now let's put them to the test, shall we? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, as the slide says, I'm definitely just throwing them into the deep end of the sea. Okay. So the first criteria, we are going to look at the, you know, the first clause of it, which is the beautiful part of it. Yeah, so that's what you're going to look at first. So uh, at the moment, it seems like, you know, yeah, since we have this or that, it's not necessarily that the art has to be beautiful per se, but we still have to ask ourselves that question and see whether that will help us re-evaluate the second clause as well, just in case. So yeah, we've got to test that. So are all beautiful things art, and are all artistic things beautiful? Well, note that, note that out of these two questions, the second one makes more sense because that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at whether all of the beautiful things are art because that's not how it works. Okay, there's other criteria. So the, just because something is beautiful doesn't make it art. But yet to see whether all artistic things have some beauty to them. But the problem here is, well, it's not even if there's art that is called ugly, but rather that the concept of beautiful itself varies from person to person. You would need a whole other set of criteria just for that. And it's kind of like saying one person's trash is another person's treasure. There have been like either really plain or even actually ugly paintings bought for millions of dollars. Like, just imagine, you would be so happy if you were that artist whose painting was bought for millions of dollars. But yeah, okay, so most of these paintings actually tend to be more of the plain kind or the abstract art kind. So they're not particularly ugly per se, they're just boring maybe, or just meaningless, I don't know, they're just abstract. So, you know, usually normal paintings that just happen to look ugly don't really get a lot of money. And... But you know what, what they, where they might end up going? They may go to this museum called the Museum of Bad Art. Yeah. Uh, maybe not everything. <laughs> not everything can go there. But anyways, wait a minute. They're still called art. The Museum of Bad Art. Like literally it says the word art in it. It's just that they're called bad art, not good art. So... That actually gives us reason to remove the criteria of beautiful because art does not need to be beautiful at all. And, uh, yeah, it's... Of course, you might be asking us, asking this question is, okay, you have that other clause as well, right? So it kind of makes sense that the art isn't beautiful per se. So is it possible to completely remove it? Maybe because if, let's say, the art doesn't actually express feel, um, express feelings or stuff like that, then you, you, maybe the next thing that you can look at is whether it's beautiful. But it's possible for a thing to be ugly and also maybe not express stuff? I don't know. So we have to look at that in greater detail. But before we look at that, um, since we are actually looking at paintings all of this time, let's look at uh, the other kinds of stuff that could be ugly in a sense. So music, drama, or dance, or even movies and things like that. Right, so how about those things? 
So first of first off, we're gonna look at music because you know music seems the most apart from painting. So we would need to actually know what exactly ugly music is to begin with because ugly means from it has a visual concept to it, not really hearing kind of concept to it. So music, but so if you're looking at ugly music, maybe it'd be some kind of music that is, you know. Ugly to the ears per se. <laughs> That's what you'd like to say. And yes. But another reason why the concept of ugly music sounds weird is because the concept of music itself already calls for something that we can actually appreciate without scrunching up our faces instantly. Like we have a distinction between sound and music. Yeah, there's a distinction. But the thing is, there's already a music score that is, well, empty to say the least. Surely there's got to be some music that may be actually terrible but still considered music. Yeah, I guess you can argue that with the, the same logic as the painting thing earlier, there will be some music that someone hates and someone loves. But actually we have a legitimate proof that there is so-called music or is it, okay, I'm not sure whether it's so-called music or it is music, but there is music that is terribly ugly <laughs> or terribly, terribly innately terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean. You can listen to it yourself. But it is still considered music because, you know, it, it sounds like music. So, yeah, that, that shows us one important thing, actually. It's not really about something being beautiful. In fact, what distinguishes even that the world's ugliest music from a sound per se is that the music was deliberately composed as such. So let's say if you're just, you know, uh, walking around and your feet just makes a noise, you're not really deliberately trying to make a noise with your feet. But when you make music, you're deliberately going and playing the piano in a certain way or singing in a certain way or doing whatever it is in a certain way. And um, yeah, this this will also apply to paintings. You won't you won't like go around, you know, writing and then suddenly it becomes a drawing. If you, you need to like, deliberately go and draw something for it to be a drawing or a painting or whatever it is, and with you know enough uh, logic, we can apply this to the other forms of art as well. For theater, it's not like you just you know randomly. Like, you can't just suddenly act. You need a reason to act. You need a reason to create a story. And for dance also, even if you were spontaneously doing it, you would have like some kind of intention that you are trying to dance. Like even if you're, like it's not, of course you can, it's like doing it for the sake of doing it. It's, it still has a purpose to it. So that's the idea. So you're either, so by deliberately, I mean you either have a purpose or you're at least aware of the fact that you're doing this. Of course, uh, sometimes people think we may be putting out a performance even when we weren't trying to. Yeah, like some people may argue this, they might think like, okay, like someone is just trying to do something else but it ends up like, yeah, it looks like they're dancing or something. But uh, that's kind of stretching this a little bit too far. <laughs> if we go that far, it'll be a little bit too problematic for us. So let's just end it here and then say that it needs to be deliberately done, per se. Yeah, and that means we can now revise our criteria and remove the beautifulness and all that stuff and replace it with something that, oh, it must be something that is deliberately done or some kind of, has some kind of purpose to it. Okay, so what would that purpose actually be? This is where we get to the second clause in the first criteria, which is expressing feelings and ideas and the second criteria actually seems like a purpose like it's one of it's one of the purposes that you can use you know when you are doing a particular art but it's not the only kind of purpose there's also other purposes that you can you know do the art for so like what i kind of you know come as I think about it, what comes to my mind is that when you're doing it spontaneously, you're kind of just doing it for the fun of it, for the for the sake, like, you know, just to exp experience your art, for self-exploration, to enjoy it. It's generally for self-serving purposes, like to 
to feel happy in a way. It's not really to tell someone, oh, I can do this. It's just, it's for yourself to enjoy doing it. Or when you're painting on your own or just randomly doodling in the class, you're getting bored. So you just want to, you know, keep yourself awake. So you have a purpose that, self, that serves yourself. But when you're expressing feelings and ideas, it's usually to serve another person, to, to send a message to a, an audience, to send to send some kind of, um, to share some kind of feeling or idea with other people. So that's the, that's a more of an other serving kind of purpose. So yeah, like even for drama, most of it tends to be other serving because you're, you're trying to send a message to someone through your story. Of course, if you're just randomly acting for yourself, that means you're trying to improve yourself. So that's self-serving. So there's a difference, there's th there are those two kinds of purposes that we can actually identify in broad detail. And um, what that means is we can actually revise that whole thing to say that it generally has a purpose, which is, which is that, um, yeah, which is that either a self-serving kind of purpose or an other-serving kind of purpose. So you can just attach it along with our deliberately done thing and then just write it as a whole statement and you'll get to see the final criteria later on. Okay, so now let's... Yeah, let me just quickly talk about the humanities. Uh, the humanities, do you think it is deliberately done? Yes, it is deliberately done. Otherwise, you know, it's not like it's just going to randomly pop out of nowhere. It has a purpose, of course, because we want to understand humans and we also want to understand um, why certain things happen to to humanity so in a way it is a it is deliberately done and it has a purpose yeah so i guess it kind of fits in so after all of that mess that i just went through i mean my script looks a bit like a mess let's move on to the other criteria so the second criteria is about skill does art require skill well, there are two aspects to skill, in my opinion. Well, the first aspect would be knowing how to do it. And the second aspect would be actually being good at the thing that, you're, that you know how to do it, in a sense. Yeah, so like, maybe for example, you want to paint. Knowing how to paint just means, you know, someone tells you, okay, to paint, just take a brush, dip it in some color, and then, you know, move the brush on the piece of paper or something, and such that the color appears on it. And you can do that pretty easily. <laughs> but actually being good at the painting is a whole other thing altogether. There's a lot of skills that you can have to... I mean, there's a lot of uh, expertise that you require to be very, very good at it, in a sense. And yeah, so since there's two levels of so-called skill or ability per se, which aspect are we looking at? Well, if... If we want to go back to the previous discussion about ugly art per se, since we say that ugly art is art, I mean, at least I'm saying it, if you don't, if you disagree with me, then you can revise this accordingly. Since ugly art is also art, you will generally say that a beginner's artwork, unless they are super talented or something, it will generally be ugly art. <laughs> so that means it's still art. It's just, it just shows that they're actually able to use the brush and paint. That's about it. Like it shows that they have that ability to do it. Even though they are not necessarily good at it or they don't have any expertise or practice or whatever it is. So if you want to be generalized about it, we can say that it shows that they're able to use the medium that they're using. If you're looking at painting or if it's like dancing, um, they just know how to do a certain move. Yeah, so that, that means that they know that this move is called dance. And... In a way, people can come up with new moves, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, in that sense, we already accepted... Yeah, so we, we can we should technically accept a, a very, like, crudely done artwork with, which reflects a very low level of expertise because we accept ugly, ugly art as art as well. And at the end of the day, they still had an intention in doing it. It's not like they just do it for without any intention at all. They have a purpose in doing it. So as far as skill goes, well, you don't really require skill in the art form per se. You just need to know how to do it, that's all. Or know what to do per se. So in, in terms of painting, maybe how to use the medium. In terms of drama or dance, know how to move. 
or what to do per se. Or in terms of uh, music, you must know how to vocalize or play an in- instrument. By vocalize, I do not mean sing super well, just make a noise that sounds like music to some extent. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's it. So, in that sense, it seems like you don't really need skill in the art form. But I thought, oh, okay, maybe what about a different kind of skill? Do we, do we need the skill of creativity? Is creativity required for art? Oh, okay, maybe not. Wait, oh, wait, I didn't mean creativity, I meant novelty. Oh, okay, fine. Well, I suppose it's just intent after all. There's, I mean, creativity and novelty may help for when you want to paste a banana on a wall with duct tape and call it art. But otherwise, you know, you don't really need it. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, just maybe we can say, we can refine our final criteria to this. Art is something that either replicates or demonstrates what is already art. Hence, basic knowledge of the art form is required as in how to do something but you do not need skill in the art form or you require the skill of coming up with novel ideas so what i mean is if you're doing something that already exists you just need to know how to do it but if you're doing something that doesn't already exist then you need the skill of novelty slash creativity to do the thing and call it art like, so, so people will call it art for you. <laughs> yeah, so that's the general, that's my criteria that I have come up with. Alrighty then, so let's look at the next one. So the third the third criteria is whether art has to be something that invokes some, pe- some kind of feeling, usually pleasure in the recipient. Of course, it sounds a bit different from how I wrote it there, but it's the same thing. <laughs> so for the pleasure itself, well, not really. But in terms of feelings itself, for the most part, you do get some kind of feeling from looking at looking at an art or watching a for performance, or whatever you're doing. For the beautiful stuff, maybe you'd feel happiness and admiration. For the ugly stuff, maybe you'd feel like laughing. Laughing? Oh, what am I <laughs> Maybe you feel like laughing or you feel cringe or disgust. For the provocative stuff, for the provocative stuff, maybe you would feel inspired or have some kind of realization. And well, for the utterly abstract stuff, well, just just plain confusion. Well, of course, the feeling may not be particularly strong for everyone, but there's going to be a, a little bit of feeling at least, because it is just human to have some kind of feeling. So yeah, we can keep that. <laughs> we can keep that criteria as it is. So finally, we will look at a more controversial criteria, which is the last one, that art is done by humans and appreciated by humans. So the thing is, I know this is a bit controversial, so I'll leave it up to you to decide whether this would be a criteria on your own. However, I will include it eventually and I'll just give you some examples of that, will, that may help you decide whether you want to keep it or not. Okay? Cool. Yeah, so so let's look at examples of non-human art. So first up, let's look at our fellow animals. Bird song is something that birds de- deliberately make. Of course, um, yeah, some of them are more instinctual, like they they literally born with it, and some of them actually learn the bird song from other birds, and they use it for communication per se, like talking. To, it's like talking to each other using bird song. Or they may use it for mating season. So in this, I think if it's like communication to them, it's not really art per se, more like just what they do every day. But if it's for mating season, then there is a sense of attraction in a sense, and it's more of an art to them. Maybe, I don't, I'm not sure how birds perceive art. So what I've come, like what this leads us to conclude is that for the birds themselves, it may not really be an art in all, the, in all of those cases. But to the human ear, it is as pretty as the songs that we listen to. And therefore, we consider it as art or music for that matter, when you get the chance to listen to it. And then there are the animals that, you know, that are trained by the humans to paint. Not sure how that happens, but they do it. 
So yeah, I'm not sure how cruel or uncruel or whatever it is. But you you, you know what I'm talking about. There's you know those um elephant parks in Thailand. They they had some elephants that will be painting some very specific thing every time. So yeah, people do find it artistic. It looks like a painting. Although the problem here is that since they they might be doing something similar each and every time, it could be that they kind of learn, like they had this um, I don't know what's that thing conditioning or something such that when the trainer gives a signal, then the elephant will paint in a certain way. So in a way, you might say that it's more of the that the humans are using the elephants as tools to paint, which makes it more of indirect art done by humans in the end. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. But at the same time, we do know that there are many things that animals do, which they may consider art. I don't know about humans, but I'm pretty sure animals would consider it something like their version of art per se. <laughs> For example, you know that bird that builds nests to attract mates, and you know practice buses building their version of a nest. I don't I'm not sure what it's called. It's like a little dam of some sort. And the dance that peacocks do in the rain to attract the peahens. And yeah, so what do we say? Do we say that what humans consider art is art? Which would be an anthropomorphic view, which mean, which I can't even spell properly, but still. Or do we consider what animals consider as art as well? And of course, it's not just animals per se. Plants grow in nature in unusual shapes, which fascinate, which fascinate humans. And of course, there's, um, yeah, we do have something called bonsai art, but that's actually humans controlling the plant's growth. So yeah, that's not really plant, it's not like the plant itself is making art. It's the humans controlling the plant to make art. Yeah. But the plants, but the natural growth of plants may not really be done in the name of art per se. I mean, it's, it's kind of just grows towards sunlight. It's what it's pro that's what the plant is programmed to do. And sometimes it looks like art to us human beings, so yeah, it's it's a bit confusing here. Although if you wanna look at it this way, maybe if you're looking at a photo of it, then it's an art. But if you're looking at the actual thing, I'm not sure how to look at it. <laughs> Is it an art done by the plant? Is it done deliberately? Is it done undeliberately? What is it? Okay. So yeah, living things are already confusing us. Now we even have robots doing art for us. We have like those robots that can make the synthetic music and all that stuff. And we even have robots that can paint and make some artwork or something. But wait, a robot is actually created by a human. So, you know, like they program it or they use some kind of neural network. So in a way, it's actually kind of an in indirect art created by humans in the end. <laughs> so yeah, so right. Um, as you can see, it is something you have to come with terms with if you want to really go the extra mile. So have fun doing that. Okay, okay. Anyway, so for now I'm just going to leave this criteria in there because I feel, in my opinion, uh, since art is something that humans define for themselves, it, in theory, something that humans make and something that humans appreciate because it is a human defined term. Yeah, so let's, let's put it at that. Uh, as for humanities, um, yeah, let's look at all of the criteria and see how humanities would fare. But I think, um, yeah, in terms of the criteria, the humanities would, like we already found out that humanities is somewhat deliberately done with a purpose. And um, does it replicate something that's already considered as art or have something that is new? Well, humanities, if we, if we call humanities as art, then any other humanities related thing would also be art in a sense. So that's kind of like induction there. Or if it's something new, it's a new theory, as long as it's relevant to the humanities subject, it is considered part of the humanities thing as well. And does it invoke feelings in the in someone who's learning the humanities or someone who's you know viewing it from afar or something? Yes, sometimes we do appreciate it for what is what it is. Although the feelings themselves may be a bit different from what you'd expect to see from art. 
But the point of humanity is really just the, the essence of being human per se. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's up to you whether you even want to talk about it. <laughs> but like it kind of does satisfy all of these criteria to some extent. So you could say that the humanities are arts as well. Yeah, so I think that's about it. Here's the final criteria as we have been seeing so far. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the entire episode. Yay. So in conclusion, uh, defining art is like defining anything else. You need to come up with criteria and then test the criteria and see how to, how to go about after you're done testing the criteria. And the conclusion is really just these final criteria that we have come up with. And from here, if we find an if we encounter a new a new piece of thing that we would like to call art, we can either compare it to the criteria and call it art, or if we feel like there's another criteria that may allow it to be art, even though it doesn't you know, if there's some other criteria, there's some kind of refinement that we need to do, you need we will then need to refine our criteria in a sense. Yeah, so that's the conclusion of that. So I hope I hope you actually find this useful because it is somewhat relevant to the notion of art per se. Uh, or at least something that you learn in your GP class. So if you find this useful, please press the like button and subscribe. If you would like more of the arts related episodes or like this kind this this style of episode where I answer a question rather than go through a topic, you can comment below with that. Um yeah, that's about it. I you know, if please do stay safe. Even though like yeah uh things are hopefully getting better but please do stay safe. Yeah. And uh, good luck for all of your exams and anything that's coming up. And with that I would like to say thank you and bye.